Sometimes Carlson's moves make commentators go wild. Oh my god! Oh my god! That was sick! You're about to see the top 5 times where Magnus's move not only demonstrated his brilliancy but also stunned his opponents and commentators. Now, this game is one of my favorite. Carlson's playing black against Hammer. It is black to play. Now, what we see here is a more or less normal uh, chess opening position. Bishop is currently attacking this knight on f4 and therefore it's got to move. Carlson played knight e2, check to the king. King moves to h1. Here, Carlson decided to develop his bishop and also to trade it off. And after this exchange, he played rook to e8, hitting this pawn on e4. So far, so good. But his opponent noticed that this knight on e2 is nearly trapped and has no way out, and he decided to punish Carlson for playing this lighthearted move. So he played bishop e3 first, giving up this pawn on e4, because then he wanted to go rook e1 and pick up this knight on e2. Indeed, it looks like there is no way for black to save the knight, or at least it's very difficult to find out something, but here comes a shocker. Queen to h5. And all of a sudden, Carlson sacrifices his queen, and why just resigned? It turned out that after the fourth pawn takes, there is this beautiful checkmate along the h file, and notice that this annoying knight on e2 takes away the square g1, which helps black to deliver this stunning checkmate. In the second game, Carlson is still playing black, this time against Fabiano Caruana. It was white to play, and white played knight to h6, check to the king. Carlson played king to g6, and here Caruana took on e6. He definitely expected Carlson to take over here this knight, and after that, Fabi would capture the pawn on f6, and the game would reach to a draw. But instead, shockingly enough, Carlson refused to take the knight, and he just grabbed the pawn. Rook takes d2, or sorry, rook takes c3. Now, it looks like now this knight is alive, right? So, white go king to d2. But here Carlson played the move which is the key point of his idea, rook to c8. And this subtle move actually takes away the final square for this knight where it could possibly go to, and it turns out that the knight is trapped. Now, in this case, Karana should have played g4 trying to free up the knight, and in that case, he would probably achieve a draw, although it's still tricky, but in the game he played a more natural move, king to e3, and after rook to h8, he just resigned, because there is literally no way for the knight to go to, all these squares are controlled by black, and so after capturing the knight, black will simply be two pawns up in an endgame, and for Carlson that's enough to win. And here's the position I showed you at the beginning of the video, which made commentators go wild. Now, let's look at it once again, it's a lot of fun. Oh my god, oh my god that was sick! So what could make solid chess commentators scream in ecstasy? Let's figure it out together. Now, at this point, we can see a fairly solid endgame position, and you would expect probably white to try to push his pawn forward, and black would either try to stop it somehow, or maybe to counterattack, like putting the rook down here and attack the pawn, or maybe putting it down here and check the king. Anyway, it looks like just a boring endgame. But Carlson played a tricky move rook to f8. Caruana apparently did not realize what's the point of this move at all, and he just continued with his own move with rook to d3, attacking this pawn, and for a moment it even looks like White missed something, because it's unclear how to defend this pawn. But here came the shocker rook to e4, and all of a sudden, instead of passing pawns forward, the game ended in this amazing checkmate. Alright, we're approaching the winners. The fourth game it was played by Carlson playing white against Karyakin playing black in their World Chess Championship match. It was black to play, and black played a natural move queen to f2, aiming for queen to g2 checkmate. Now, it looks like white's gonna need to defend it somehow, play queen g3 or something like that, but instead Carlson played rook c8 check. Karyakin said okay, king h7, fine. Now, not only I'm threatening queen and g2, but also queen f1 or rook to a1, so am I winning here? But Carlson said nope. Queen h6. And this queen sacrifice came out of nowhere, and strangely enough, it leads to checkmate and all the variations. If the king takes, here comes the rook to h8, delivering this kind of boxed, interesting checkmate, and instead of black captures with a pawn, here comes this linear checkmate, and notice that in both cases, this little pawn on h5 plays a key role, taking away one of the squares. I left the best for lost. Here, once again, Carlson is playing against Caruana in, I think, their painful match for Caruana, where he couldn't win a single game and literally was adopted by Carlson. Anyway, Carlson is known for squeezing victories out of equal drawish endgames. 
So generally speaking, we're not surprised when he outplays somebody. But it clearly looks like this time it's not gonna happen. The position is closed, it's dull, and Caruana made everything he could to keep the position locked and well defended. Looks like this time it must be a draw. And yet Carlson played the move pawn to g5, giving up a pawn. Like, what the heck is going on here? So Caruana captured it, but it follows with bishop to g5, this time sacrificing the bishop. So what is this madness? And it turns out that black cannot really capture the bishop because then white keeps pushing pawn to f6 and thanks to this breakthrough his passer on the h file is gonna be promoted and there is no way for black to stop it. So a really beautiful combo, completely unexpected in such a dull endgame position. Now Caruana did not take the bishop because apparently it loses the game, but thanks to this pawn breakthrough uh, Carlson managed to open up the position so that now he has more space to maneuver and to attack black. Uh, for example, here, if black plays something like bishop d8 or whatever, white can play h6, for instance. Uh, again, the pawn is threatening to go forward, therefore black will be forced to recapture. And now white managed to kind of uncover black's pawn chain. He'll be able to move with his king forward, perhaps somewhere there, and then go after those pawns and white later won the game. Now, if you enjoyed this, you may wish to check out this video where I'm sharing how Magnus Carlsen used our dirty opening trick to defeat his opponent grandmaster in about 10 moves. Also, if you are enjoying this, you may consider subscribing and hitting the bell to not miss out on future uploads, and I'll be happy to serve you in the future. Have a great rest of the day, take care.